Hello, I'm Gabriela Ramos. I'm Assistant Director General for uh, Social and Human Sciences at UNESCO. And I have the great, great pleasure to welcome Professor Mohamed Yunus. Uh, he doesn't need any introduction because, of course, he's a Nobel Prize. He has this amazing uh, big uh, uh, microcredit uh, foundation. Uh, but now I'm going to be interviewing him for something else that probably people don't put a lot of attention to, but is his role in sports. In UNESCO, the social and human science sector deals with the sports, but not only sports for doing sports and for being healthy and for being happy, which is true, but for building more cohesive societies. So my fir first and foremost, thank you so much for this Thank you, Venus. thank you for inviting me. I, I feel I'm becoming your professional interviewer, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm honored about that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but, but I wanted to, to, to say first, welcome to UNESCO. Second, we are proud that we are going to partner in terms of deploying sports as a, as a, as a source uh, and, and force for good. But I wanted uh, you to share with our audience, uh, Professor, uh, being an economist, uh, having been building this amazing microcredit system that now, of course, is everywhere, your bank, uh, the Grameen Bank, and that everybody is looking at this the very way in, in which you de develop the, the system. Uh, what, bring, what brought you from there to the Junos Sports Hub? How, how do you link them? How do you explain thank, to the thank public? You. Thank you for asking that question. Because first of all, I'm not a sports person. <laughs> <laughs> I was not associated with any sports event and so on. Uh, but I see the impact of sports in people, uh, particularly coming from Bangladesh. I see it uh, every day. And, and picks it uh, during World Cup. When World Cup comes in, almost every house in Bangladesh, in the rural areas, in the urban areas, raising flags of the country, of the club, they support. Uh, the whole country is filled with varieties of flags. They don't ever know what this country is all about, uh, what kind of people they are, but they know the uh, team that is playing for the country. They know the team members, they are excited about who they are, and, and uh, they are fans of each uh, team. Uh, when the team is defeated in the game, uh, the whole village who was supporting that team is a dead silence. Mm -hmm. They are weeping, they, are, uh, they don't want to talk to anybody, they don't want to see anybody. It's an emotional impact that it creates in people. Imagine if their team won the match. Celebration. They don't have much to celebrate, but they will give anything to celebrate. And it always made me wonder, what happens to these people who don't know the country, don't know the people, but the strong bond of relationship in their victory and their defeat and the sacrifice things. They make the flags, unusual size flags. Uh, last flag that I know was uh, made a three and a half miles long flag of the country, the sport. So you can imagine, they pour in money to support that kind of thing. So that I thought this is something very important that the sports has in the people's mind. And I see what use this um, power that you have inside the people. Uh, I see entertainment is the one thing that you make use of sports, that's universally done. And sometimes you use it commercially to promote a product, a watch or something that you want to advertise and sell it. And that's about it. I said it's much bigger than that. Uh, it has, uh, this power could be used for social purposes, for social changes, if we only know how to channel this power into that direction. That idea uh, came into my mind. I started talking about it. And uh, that led me to go through layers and layers of people who were, were, want to talk about it. And finally, I was invited to address the Olympic Committee, International Olympic Committee, during uh, Rio Olympic mm -hmm. 2016. Mm -hmm. So I explained that. And uh, out of that came awareness that, yes, we can do something. and. France became very interested, and Paris wanted to have the selection of the International Olympic Committee for the next Olympic at that time. 
there are other competitors like uh, Los Angeles and others. So they said, we would like to do something, what you're saying, and how do you do that? So we have series of meetings with the Paris team, and finally we said we should create a social business Olympic. Mm. So way back, 2017. And that led to the selection of Paris for 2024 uh, uh, Olympic, and we got involved how to design it. Now 2024 is just knocking at the door, yeah. so all the things are done how to use the massive amount of money that you use for Olympic, like 7 billion euro mm -hmm. is the budget for the Olympic here in Paris. Uh, I said that not a single penny of this 7 billion euro should go into something which doesn't have a social purpose. So you have to figure out, ask the question, what is the social purpose that you are using this money for? And I'm very happy they took it very seriously. Now it is coming and this is one example that is created. Uh, and now the next Olympic is coming in uh, Milan, Milan Cortino, 2026 Winter Olympic. They became very interested because of the Paris thing. Uh, they invited us to see how we can uh, do the similar thing with the uh, uh, Milan, Olympic, Milan Cortino Olympic. So idea is to use this power in a social direction. And that's what uh, we created UNOS Social, uh, UNOS uh, Sports Hub, so that we can specialize in these areas and so on. We do many other things, like you mentioned, microcredit, we do environment, we yep. do many other things. But this is dedicated to sports issues. It's very exciting experiences that we have so far. It's, it's, it's really amazing because, because the fact is that at UNESCO, we also mm. have this perspective in the sense that, uh, yes, for entertainment, yes, for personal uh, improvements, betterment of uh, health and, and, and well-being, but the reality is that you see those ingredients, uh, yeah. bringing people together, common purpose, uh, positive uh, uh, connections, and, and our Fit for Life initiative actually is trying to capture the intangible impact of sports. So it's pretty much uh, up your ally. Okay. And we're also working with Paris 24 because it's true that, uh, that these uh, uh, originally commercial economic events need to deliver for people. Uh, but, but then you created this Junos mm -hmm. Sports Hub and, and you're also linked in with uh, social enterprises. And I feel that this is another angle that we can tap on in our cooperation, of course. Yeah, uh, it's not another angle. This is the only angle. It's uh, what we do. The whole Junos. Whole oh, well, this okay. is the only thing that we do. Uh, like when you are invited to do, uh, design something as an Olympic, which is a mega, mega thing. All we are saying, everything we do should be done in a social business way. How do you do that? So we discussed many things. One thing came out uh, very strongly, the procurement. Each Olympic has to procure huge amount of things, uh, spend a lot of money in procurement. Usually what they do, we want so many thousand, pe hundred thousand pieces of this, million pieces of that. Uh, you have a tender notice and big companies join the tender that I'll supply it, this quality, this money and so on and so forth. I said, all you have to do now, since we don't have social businesses competing in this, that big, big social business not created yet, yep. you just add one sentence in the tender notice, social businesses will be given priority. That's all. Rest is remain same. So big companies will contest. Now, some social business say, hey, this is an opportunity. Yeah. Let's not, why don't we get in and uh, compete in this? And not only they will say that, Olympic itself will encourage the social businesses to be created so that they can compete. Many big businesses will see an opportunity for them, uh, to only opportunity for them to compete in this is to have some social business on the mm -hmm. side. So they come to these tiny little social businesses who, to have partnership and then say that we have a partner which is a social business. So you have a, a kind of priority in that. So that way you're encouraging things. In the meantime, we encourage the little businesses to grow big, partnership, collective way and so on, train them up, give them examples of how to do that and create those examples to be something valid for the Olympic and so on. Many, many such social businesses are created for Paris Olympic because of that. Uh, so this is uh, something that we focus on and uh, procurement is a good example of that. Well, that uh, I, I was as I was telling to our audience that uh, that you're an economist, 
and you're sending market signals <laughs> and aligning the incentives. And this is exactly also what we're trying to do to extract the real value of, of sports for societies, for peaceful coexistence, for equality, gender equality, uh, for youth. And, and that's why we are so excited because we see that we are almost soul sisters or soul yes. brother and sister. Right, right. <laughs> but the, the reality is that uh, uh, if we feel we are powerful in UNESCO in terms of sports as a, as a source of uh, well-being, uh, partnering with you, it will really bring it to a higher level. Wonderful. And, and, and this thing is, is really related to youth empowerment, cities empowerment, but also aligning the big events towards the common good. Yes. And therefore, uh, tell me a little just bit about this partnership yeah, with UNESCO. Well, first, yes, what just you want so, to yes, yes, just one point I wanted to uh, point out, you mentioned about youth. Sports is all about youth. You don't have all people in sports. Oh, if you're 35, no, not in sports, <laughs> not in real performing okay, sports. Okay. You have a support and so High on, you have coach and so on, but that's okay. But what the sports, real sports people on the ground are people under 35 or under 36, 38, that's about it. 38 is very old. Very old already for, for sports, yeah. you are very old. If you are 38, you don't do anything. So it's a youth. You are talking about a huge number of youth who are visible in competitions. But beyond that competition, there are layers and layers of youth who are co preparing themselves, struggling to get to the next level, to the, get to the next level so that they can go to the top. Not everybody goes to the top. For every person on the top, there are thousands of persons in the bottom who are struggling and so on. Then by the time 35 or the cutoff date comes, you are no longer valid to sports. What do you do with yourself? Massive number of people are frustrated. They have not done anything for their career. Only thing career they thought about is sports. Uh, they become very frustrated. They become um, addicted uh, because of the frustrations. They don't have a life left for them. They came very, very close. Makes it more upset because I can just one little thing. I would have done it. I would have, and it didn't do it because I got sick on that the previous day or something happened or to somebody me. Somebody was better. Better if somebody is better. So, so he feels he cannot forgive himself for that. And that co continues. And they have no job because you're told for a job. So you start a job. Sure. So there's a frustrated community of uh, sports persons who are out of the sports, active at sports. So we said they shouldn't be like that. They have dedicated their life for a single-minded pursuit for competition and ex excellence and a very, very purpose of uh, winning. So they have that power inside of them. Why don't we transform them, help them transform themselves into entrepreneurs? Prepare them. Because nobody gives them a job because they have no experience at this age. With no experience, where do you go? Uh, um, somebody has to make really a favor to hire a 35-year-old ex-sports person to do something which he never did before. So for most of them, almost all of them, they are rejected people. So I said, they shouldn't be rejected people. They are the successful people. Make that, okay, you have not done well in this, but you can excel here. This is also competition. This is also single-minded pursuit. It's also about excellence. You show your excellence. You become an entrepreneur. So we create funds investment funds mm -hmm. and tell this sports people prepare yourself to become entrepreneurs while you are still competing prepare for your next line of uh, career so that and they like that so this is one and not only we are doing in a small way to demonstrate that it's possible uh, but it can be done globally so this is one challenge we said why don't you address this issue of the young people who are frustrated the good people you are only dancing around with the top but forgetting all the people who are below, below the top. So this is the most important element that we want to uh, draw attention to. Uh, there are lots of so, uh, sports businesses. Sports goods you sell, sports goods you produce, and uh, is universal businesses and so on. Uh, we, we invite them, say, that, look, your life is about sports. Uh, you have a role to play with the sports people and so on. Why don't you come up with the social business ideas? so that they can be helped to become a sports uh, entrepreneur. Uh, you have products, they can sell it very well. Yeah. 
because they know everything about how which is good, which is bad, and which is very particular. They know all of it. So hire them as your agents. Give them a business opportunity. Not a, you don't have to hire them. Give them business opportunity. You give them the products. They sell it, pay it back, and move on with their future. So this is another layer of people that we want to talk about. Then there are many who are related to sports in very different ways, either in a business way and so on. Going back, that again, raising these issues, how to make that happen. There are uh, sports people who are handicapped, the para Paralympics. They are, to begin with, they are uh, uh, disadvantaged. Disadvantage? Disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, these are both, both boy, boys and girls, both are disadvantaged. Luckily, they got this opportunity for sports. They feel good for a while. Then the sports life is over. Somebody else takes over. I'm out and I'm, I'm thrown away in the society. Yeah. Why should it be thrown away? I said, you have done something. We appreciate you, adore you. Uh, you should be on the top all the time. You, you will create your sp biz and, uh, business doesn't need all your arms and uh, legs and everything. All you need is your head and your, and your power. power to and your do that. Power. And you are already connected. People know you. You are familiar. And you know you have competed in that. Use that. So we are preparing that Paralympic people to make sure they have a career ahead of them. They are proud of themselves. Dignity should not be taken away from the sports people, no matter whether you're in the bottom of the pyramid or in the top of the pyramid. That dignity you brought to yourself and you retain it, and society must guarantee that you retain that dignity without worrying what happens to me, I don't know anything about after the sports. So this is the kind of thing we are addressing. I said we are we are soul sisters and, and soul brothers, but, but when I hear you speaking, it's exactly really the approach that we are taking. I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you. And that's why we are partnering with the, uh, Professor Jun, uh, Junus. And um, uh, we are going to celebrate the World Conference of Ministers of Sports in Baku. And this approach that you have defined so nicely, which is very simple. You care about sure. people. That's it. You care about people. And it doesn't matter where they are, how they are, what they do or what they don't do. You provide with, with a way to, to really uh, take advantage of their strength, of their force, and then deliver for their own benefit. And therefore, this is why we are so excited to partner with excited. you. Thank you. And I would like to finish this, this conversation, Professor Jonas, because I want our, our public to know what does it mean for you to partner with UNESCO? Now that well, we have this very similar way of addressing the issues. We will be delivering in the MINEPS end of June lots of these things, labeling uh, big sports events, delivering for safety of sports people, respect for sports people because they are also under a lot of pressure, the question of the gender equality, the question of measuring the return of investment in sports, which is not rightly done now. We only capture what a cost-benefit analysis that I don't think is good for really capturing all these benefits. So we want to hear from you how you see UNESCO as your partner. Well, first of all, um, United Nations. UNESCO is the United Nations, a part of the United Nations. Uh, attracts attention for the whole world and respect from the whole world. What you say, what you do has a tremendous amount of impact in people's mind, organization's mind. So your uh, one uh, policy statement becomes so significant uh, for everybody in the world, particularly all the governments of the world are connected with you because they are the member states. Uh, on their behalf, you're saying this, we are doing this. So what you say, it seeps through all the layers of the bureaucracy and gets to the ministry and ministry has to now do something about it. So it, it has, you have automatic channel. Uh, sometimes uh, that channel may not be well used. Uh, all we are saying, use it because the uh, whole world uh, is waiting to hear from you. What is your policy, what you are thinking and so on, make a policy, encourage the government to the ministry and ministries to impact on the businesses to the sports world, how to make this uh, people who are in the sports, they are not, they don't end up as a forgotten people. They remain as important people as they were when they are in sports, as they are when, even when their sports part is over. They should know that the sports is phase one of their life, but there's a phase two of their life. That phase two should be as glorious as their phase one. It should not be kind of 
you've forgotten, nobody knows you anymore, nobody cares for you anymore. Uh, people move on, the guy, uh, the, the little kid who is coming up, and all, everybody's running after him, you are pushed away, uh, you are nobody, because you spent all your life in promoting this sports, and you are, at your time, you are the number one attraction for the games and so on. You remain that attraction, but move into the phase two of that life. This is what we should be doing, admiring them, drawing attention to them, uh, give seal of approval from the United Nations that you, this is wonderful organizations or it's a wonderful program that you have been doing, those kind of things. We will be stronger yes, indeed. partnering with you, Professor. Uh, we'll be delighted. Uh, I, I know that, uh, that UNESCO is a wonderful brand. I met you, uh, I have been always in the multilateral setting. I met you before with other very uh, beautiful institutions, but UNESCO is a big brand. Absolutely. And with your brand, is going to be huge. So I just want to thank you thank for you. this interview. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you to the public for watching us and actually inviting you to keep watching this space because we will be delivering very good outcomes here with uh, this partnership with Professor Junos and the Junos Sports, Sports Hub, Hub. and the Fit for Life UNESCO. Thank you very much.